Hi everybody, my name is Ben Songroth and I am here to talk to you about some Chromebook tips and tricks. And this time we're gonna physically talk about the Chromebook and what this device does in the power of your students' hands. Um, so I'm really excited to partner with Cook County Higher Education on this project uh, and really helping to uh, ease some fears and allow this transition to a remote learning or distance learning environment be as smooth as possible. So when we're talking about the physical Chromebook itself. So I have one here. This is mine. Yours probably looks a little bit different. There are several different models out there. And so everyone has a little bit difference to it. But the thing that's great about a Chromebook is that every manufacturer, so no matter if this one's an HP, you have a Dell, um, any other manufacturer, they're all going to have relatively the same because the Chromebook all operates off of Chrome OS, which means that it has to have a lot of similarities no matter what the manufacturer is. So I just want to dive into this a little bit. So the first thing I want to talk about is properly caring for this device. So one of the things that you want to help make sure your students do is anytime they're carrying it around, I always tell my kids, no matter what age you are, if you're three or if you're a senior in high school or if you're an adult, um, except I guess I'm breaking that rule right now, two hands. Okay, so carrying this device around, hands on it, two hands. We worked at this at the school district that I worked at. Make sure you're securing it when you're going from place to place. Don't have your kids carry it by the top, by the bezel. That can really weigh on it. It might, you know, easier to drop. This isn't a really good thing. You don't want to wear these joints out. So you want to make sure you're always carrying it around with two hands. If it possible, have them close it when they're carrying it. Um, another couple of pieces of advice, try not to stack things on top of this. Um, so we get kids that put this on the bottom on their desk and then they stack books on top of it. That'll actually compress the screen and it might cause the screen to break. So I've fixed hundreds of broken screens uh, in my career. And one of the big reasons is not because of drops, but often it's because people stack things on top of their Chromebooks. So this should always go on top of the pile of books and not on the bottom. So that's just a really good piece of advice. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure this is always charged. So Chromebooks have an outstanding battery. Most of them last over eight hours. In fact, some of the new ones are claiming 12 to 14 hours of battery life. They're really great because they don't have as much processing speed or power as what a, a regular computer would. So when you're talking about a Chromebook, it's able to use less power which means that the battery lasts longer. So if you have a laptop at home and the battery only lasts a little bit, an hour or two hours, okay, that's because that thing's running at a half faster pace. This thing doesn't have as many programs to run on. It's only running the Chrome web browser and that's it. So the battery lasts longer, but we wanna make sure it's charged. So one of the things we wanna do is, you can see here, I've got a flashing light going on this one. That's because this is actually the charging port on the Chromebook. You can see there's a little, battery icon there, a little cord. That means that this is the one we want to make sure we plug the charger into. So all chargers look to be about the same. Most of them are what's called a USB-C input, okay? And then they're plugged into the power block and then that goes into the wall. And so when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you plug that in, you have everything connected, and then you're going to get a good charge. Some of them come apart at the power block, okay? So like this one pops off. If your student's device isn't charging properly, check to make sure that's secure. They can come loose a little bit, and if they come loose, the connection might not go all the way through to the device. So you wanna make sure that when you're charging it, everything's connected. It sounds simple, but it's honestly a good tip. We had lots of kids when I was a director of technology at a school district come in with dead Chromebooks, say their charger wasn't working, and all it was was just a quick pop that in, charger worked. So you wanna make sure you do that, okay? Now there shouldn't be any issue with overcharging a device or anything like that, but um, you know, if you don't wanna potentially use any extra energy, you can keep it unplugged, plug it in when your student needs to make sure their device is charged. So that's just a couple of things when it comes to the kind of the outside of the device and then making sure that it's charged. When we look at the inside of the device, okay? We're gonna go into more detail in a screencast about what all is going on here. That's in the video number one or number two, depending on which order you've watched these in. But we really wanna focus in on is the keyboard, okay? So there's a couple of things with the keyboard and the whole area here, including the trackpad that I wanna make sure I get out to everybody, okay? We're gonna start with the trackpad. So the trackpad is here, and this is what controls your mouse cursor. And when we open up a new Chrome browser window, we can just tap on the trackpad. You don't actually have to make it click. You can just simply tap on it and that should create the click. 
Now, if we want to right click on it, because a lot of applications actually call for a right click in some cases to be able to manipulate things or, you know, do something of the like. And when we're on a mouse, that's the right button. Well, on a trackpad, we don't have that. And so what we want to do for a right click is we want to go ahead and just take two fingers and lightly tap on the screen or on the trackpad. And then on the screen, you can see I get my right click window. Okay, so that's a two finger tap and that will create uh, the right click on the trackpad. The other thing that I see a lot of people doing is that when we go in and we wanna scroll, okay? Sometimes what people tend to do is we go over to the side and we try to pull down the slide bar over here, and that's fine, but it's a lot of work, it's a lot of dexterity. So here's your other tip. Take two fingers, when you wanna scroll, you just pull down on the trackpad and that will scroll it for you. And when you wanna go up, scroll up. So it's just a little bit easier. You don't have to go over to the side margin, grab that, and try to do it with two fingers like this. Simply go to the middle of the screen, pull down and push up. Okay, so a couple of quick, easy things to kind of learn and pick up when you're talking about the trackpad on a Chromebook. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna look at some of these unique keys. So this looks a little bit different than what a normal computer would look like. And so your laptops might not have some of these. The first one you're gonna notice is there's actually a search button. It has this little magnifying glass on it. Okay, and when you do that, that's actually gonna bring up your launcher. So in this other video that I've filmed, you're gonna see what the launcher is for. Okay, that's gonna allow you to search for different uh, applications, websites, things like that directly inside of the Chromebook, okay? But, so that's what that key's gonna do, just a quick shortcut. Now some of these other keys that we're looking at, Okay, across the top, uh, you have forward and back. Those actually allow you to go back and then forward. So it's kind of like using the two arrows in the top left-hand corner of the screen. And then you have a refresh key here. The next one over is a box with two corners in it. Okay, that one is going to expand out your screen. So you see when I did that, I actually lose my top box at the top and then also the shelf. So that's gonna give me a better view. It's gonna give me more space, which on these Chromebooks, sometimes they have really small screens. And so you wanna make sure you can maximize the screen space to your best of your ability. But when I get this, sometimes students bring me their devices and they're like, what happened to everything? Okay, uh, you have to hit that button and then it all comes back. Now, if it is expanded, you can still scroll your mouse up to the top and you can see it drops down, perfect. Okay, and if you go to the bottom, the shelf pops back up. So it's just a way to give you a little bit bigger view on the Chromebook. Now, you might also be wondering, what's the next button? It's a box with two lines next to it. And what that's gonna do is that's actually, if I have multiple windows open, so like in this case, I have the files window open and the Chrome window open. If I hit that button right there, it's gonna show me all the different windows that I have open on my device at this time. And if I hit it back, it just puts it back into the order in which I had them layered before. So if you have a lot of different windows open, you might wanna you know, see which ones you have going on. You can tap that, see which windows are open, and then you can click on one and it'll bring it back to the forefront. So that's what that button does. Now the next two across are actually your brightness keys. So as I do up and down, the small one makes it darker, the larger one increases the brightness. That just helps in low light or high light situations. And you can also use that to extend battery life. So if your student is struggling with battery life, decreasing the brightness actually extends battery life. It doesn't use as much power to keep the screen brighter. Therefore, longer battery. We all like longer battery lives, okay? Especially when we're down to that last trickle of juice. We wanna make sure we get every single squeeze out of that battery. Okay, and then lastly, we have our volume buttons. And so the volume buttons start with mute. It's got the slash through the speaker. That's gonna be next. And then you have volume down and volume up, okay? So each one of those are gonna control your volume back and forth and then is the power button is next. Now, if you just tap the power button, you actually get or press and hold lightly on the power button, you get some options there, okay? And that's what we're gonna wrap with, Our what can we do here? How can we make sure that our Chromebook is safe and secure? And because one of the things that is great about Chrome is it saves everything, okay? It'll save your logins, it'll make signing into things that much easier. 
But what comes with that is if you don't sign out or you don't lock your device and somebody comes along and they get into it, they might have access to all your stuff. So you want to be safe and secure as you're using your Chromebook. So simply pressing and lightly holding on the power button gives us some options. We can turn off the device, which would then allow us or force us to have to log back in. Okay, we can sign out, which will then also require us to log back in, or we can lock it. Now, if we lock it, it does require us to sign back in. However, all of our windows stay open. So if I lock this, I go to the home screen here, and then I can now sign in quickly. and I'm able to come right back to the screen that I was at, where if I sign out, it'll kind of forget all the windows and where I was at, and then cause me to have to sign back in completely and kind of open up a new Chrome browser and start from scratch. So that's what we're doing when we're looking at the, just at the power button here on those different options, okay? And I wanna wrap with this, maintenance of it, okay? So just on the overall appearance, Anytime you're cleaning it, cleaning it is a big thing right now in the age of coronavirus. We don't want to use hard surface cleaners on this. So we want to stay away from Clorox wipes. We want to stay away from, you know, using those on the screen. You can actually destroy the screen by using a hard wipe on it. Okay. So what you want to do is one, probably want to, unless they're touch screen, not touch the screen with our fingertips anyways. It gets it all smudged and stuff, but kids are kids. They're going to do that. So what I suggest is look for a soft cloth. Okay, so get a soft terry cloth. You can actually find these at most stores that are called screen cleaners. They're very affordable, very cheap. And this type of a cloth can go on and clean your screen and remove all those fudges and smudges and all that stuff that comes with greasy fingertips. Now, if you wanna actually disinfect the surface, the best case is to find a soft terry cloth and use a little, just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Just dab it on there, don't get it soaking wet, and then just rub down the keyboard, the trackpad, the bezel around, and then you'll be able to make sure your device is nice and clean and sanitary for the next time that you're gonna use it. So those are my tips for maintaining your Chromebook. These little machines for being really as kind of simplistic in the operating system that they run on are amazing educational tools. So I hope you found these tips and tricks helpful. Uh, and uh, if you have any concerns at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to help and answer any questions. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. I really hope you found the information helpful and you're gonna be able to start the school year off on the right foot utilizing your Chromebook. I wanna take a minute to recognize Cook County Higher Education for making this video possible. You can reach them at any of the contact means that are listed here on the video at the moment. So again, thank you all for watching. Good luck as you start the school year. And if you ever need anything, please reach out and find me at exploringedtech.com. This is Ben Sangrath, and have a great day.